What's up, everyone? Wanted to do a case study today for you. So this house you see here um, had a 30, approximately $30,000 overage on it. And I want to tell you about this deal that we did. And hopefully you can learn something from it. So this was an estate case, meaning the homeowner had passed away and we were dealing with the heirs in the situation. And I want to share with you, you know, the outcome of this. But first, let's talk about something that's very important and something that um, <clears throat> you will run across in this business. And it's also a good life lesson uh, for all of us, because what happened with this case is a good life lesson for me. And it taught me something that's very important that, you know, it's something that we don't learn a lot about in, in public school or whatever. And that is the importance of keeping good records and the importance of having a will in place, but not just a will, but like having it notarized and having that paperwork um, stored in a place where you know that, you know, whoever is going to be affected by your estate or um, <clears throat> administering your estate should you pass away so that they have access to those documents so that your wishes will be fulfilled. Okay. So let me tell you the story about this house. Homeowner passed away. He was married at the time, but he did have a will in place. Okay. And he had several children from a previous marriage. And what had ended up happening is I found the youngest daughter of the homeowner that passed away. And she told me this story about how in her dad's will, um, he wanted everything to be passed down, you know, from the oldest to the youngest. So, you know, the oldest was going to get the life insurance policy. Uh, the middle child was going to get a car that the dad had. And he wanted his youngest daughter, my client, to inherit this house so she could raise her children in it. According to her, those were her father's wishes in his will. Here's what happened in this case. The man was married when he died to my client's stepmother. Well, the stepmother, because apparently this will was never notarized and there was never a formal probate done, Basically, the stepmom did whatever she wanted with the assets. Um, she split the life insurance with one of the siblings of my client. Um, one guy did get this car, and she lived in this house until she lost it to foreclosure. And so basically, my client, because her dad, it was good that he had a will, but because the will was not notarized and because he didn't have a copy you know, given to his you know, to his children, the ones who would be affected by his estate and the ones who would probably carry out his wishes. Um, my client had no documentation of this because she was never given any and the stepmother had all the documentation. And so when did, what ended up happening? Well, the stepmother found out about the overage and because my client didn't have copies of the will, she could not prove that, um, you know, the wishes of her father were that she inherit this house. She couldn't prove it. And because she couldn't prove it, we didn't have any evidence to go against the stepmother who also submitted a claim. And, and so what ended up happening is the stepmother got all of the overage and my client got nothing. Now, maybe she wasn't telling the truth. I don't know. But if she was telling the truth, it's very unfortunate because that means the stepmother went against the wishes of her deceased husband and took everything for herself. So um, this is not a happy story, of course, but this is a real life scenario that happened. <clears throat> Obviously I lost money on this deal because we didn't recover any money. And um, it's just sad, right? I mean, I don't mean to be a downer, but it's it's a sad situation that this happened. It shouldn't have happened because let's say if my client was telling the truth and indeed her dad wanted her to have this house, 
um, his wishes weren't fulfilled. And it could have been avoided by just a few small, simple tweaks, you know, had he given documents to his children so that they knew what was going on and so that they could prove what was going on versus just leaving everything to his step wife or his, his wife. But you live and learn and you, we don't think about these scenarios because we try to, you know, avoid thinking about what's going to happen when we die. But it's still an important topic, you know. If there's certain things that you want done when you pass away, make sure you have it in writing, make sure it's notarized, make sure it's legal, have a, a probate attorney look over it. And so that you have these matters and these affairs squared away so that your wishes are carried out and, you know, people don't get screwed over out of what could have come to them, like the case of my client. So that's what I've got for you today. Not a happy deal, not a not a, a happy story, but I think it's important because there's lessons to be learned, lessons about life, and so I hope it helps you. Uh, let me know your questions, and again, if you want to, you know, these these are kind of the scenarios you'll come up against, especially when dealing with uh, estate cases. Because remember, foreclosure one of the leading causes of foreclosure is death. It just is. So you're going to be dealing with these scenarios a lot. So. Um, to get more information on that, you can check out my course, OverageSyndicate.com. And until next time, we'll see you guys. Have a good one.